My name is Joni Bumba. Uh, I do sculpture art with Kang Shell and Mahogany. I've been doing this now for like 20 years now. I used to make a bunch of horns. My daddy, Bumba, taught me how to make the horns and I was doing a, a big show for school. And one day I came home and I said to myself, you know, everybody was making horns, lamps, all kind of stuff with Kang Shell. I said, one day, let me see how inside of a shell look. It just like a spirit came on me and said, Juni Bumba, cut a shell open and see how it look inside. So, one day I cut open the shell and I was playing music at the Blue Moon and Strand Street in Fredericksburg. And I took two five gallon buckets with pieces that I cut the day as I was playing the night. And when I took them into the bar, I waited till I took my first break and I took them out and I set them on top of the, the bar. And they were sold in like 15 minutes. Most of my pieces are named from places here in St. Croix. This one I named Bethlehem Sugar Mill. Um, this one I took California with me. And um, it's been in a lot, a lot of big shows in California. And I had it up there for almost a year. And then somebody came and bought it. But um, this is my most favorite piece here, historically called Bethlehem Sugar Mill. I have a friend from Santo Domingo, his name is Calito, and I buy the shells from him and I tell him what I need, what kind of shells, the thickness of the shell, uh, the shape of the shell, and um, he brings them for me, and then I put them in a solution with uh, bleach and water. If you put too much of bleach and water, then you kill the, the color of the shell. You have to be very careful when you mix in your solution. If you mix in it for like one, two, or three shells, then you put half a bottle of Clorox. If you mix in it for more than three or four shells, then you put about, I put about two gallons. So it, it, it soaks for about two or three days. And what happens is all the allergy that's on the shell when it comes out of the water, the, the Clorox and the water eats it off and it cleans it for me. And then what I do, I take a wire brush and I brush it for anything else that's on it. And then it makes the shell, the pretty outside part, it makes it look like mahogany. And then what I do with it is, after I do with it, my finish with the shell, sand, clean, and um, wire brush, I take a little bit of baby oil. Just like sometimes people use furniture oil to clean what uh, put on the furniture to keep it, the wood from drying out. The same thing with the shell. I take a little bit of baby oil and I rub on the outside and in the inside. If the shell gets dirty like dust on it or anything, you just rinse it off with fresh water. You wipe it off with a cloth and you take a little bit of baby oil again and put on it and the color comes back up. Nobody in the world doing this kind of work that I'm doing. Really, really appeal to me that you know, like this art is very easy to do. It's, it's something here that we use to eat. You could do a lot. You could make a lot of stuff with the conch. You could make burgers with it. You could make uh, conch and fungi. You could make fritters with it. You could eat it raw. You could do almost anything with conch. I can remember when I was a little boy. Growing up in Fredericksted, the conch shell was blown for when a fisherman come in. My mother would hear the shell blowing. Cause we didn't live too far from the beach. We used to live maybe about three blocks from the beach. And my mother used to say, oh, the fisherman come in, he got jack, so he got some type of fish. And then they blew it. And um, we used to go down there and glad to get down there because we used to get a chance to get away from home and swim and have a little fun at the beach. But basically, this conch shell here signifies a big piece of history. When Queen Mary, Bodo, and all of them who were planning for the revolt to free themselves from slavery, this was a telephone that they used. We didn't have cell phone, 
we didn't have all this modern communication that they have now to make communication with one another. This was the, basically the, the stuff that they used to blow from one estate to the next estate so that they could make arrangement for when they're going to move, what time they're going to move, where they're going to gather, and, 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 and what they're going to do when they got there. So the Kang Shell was, I have two of them in my hand. Basically, if you look at the ears of the Kang Shell, the ears, this is the ears of these two. The ears make a difference when you blow them and um, the song gonna be different. So I gonna blow this one, this one gonna be higher, this gonna be a little lower. So I gonna blow this one. Now this one have a different sound.